Mr. Hahn. I'm currently the Program Editor of Global Horizons at the NATO Association of Canada. Today, I have the great honor of interviewing the first ever female Consul General representing Afghanistan. She's currently the Consul General of Afghanistan here in Toronto. Thank you very much, Honorable Nazifa Langarian, for doing this interview today. It's um, a pleasure to speak with you, and I thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to sit down to do this interview with me today. Thank you very much uh, for coming here. Uh, by the name of Almighty Allah, I'd like to thank you very much for coming to Council General of Afghanistan in Toronto. Thank you so much. I would, Council General, I'd like to begin by asking you a few questions pertaining to, to your experience. A lot of our viewers uh, have the opportunity to learn about the influence of diplomats, government officials, and people who have made a significant difference in the community. I'd like to start off by asking you about your work. As the first ever female Consul General of Afghanistan here in Toronto, can you please discuss the significance of this position along with the significance and impact of the work that you do for the community? Oh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, before uh, talking about the significant uh, aspect of being uh, as a council general in Toronto, uh, I think it's better to talk about a little bit about myself. Certainly. From here, I started to come to this position and achieve this position. Um, uh, I would like to talk about my education and uh, work experience. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree in law and political science from Cobb University and my master's degree in public administration from uh, Northridge University from the United States, California. And uh, um, besides, I uh, follow some uh, short-term training, diplomacy training courses in European countries as well as in uh, Asian countries. Uh, European countries like uh, Germany, um, uh, France, Switzerland, uh, Vienna, Brussels, and uh, also in uh, Asian countries like uh, Malaysia. I had short term university training courses at the beginning. And uh, uh, my work experience, uh, when I got my bachelor's degree, I uh, started my job at the university as an assistant professor. And, uh, I taught law subject uh, and for uh, half, a, half a semester. But then Taliban came and we went, uh, I and my family went to Pakistan. And uh, I stayed with my family in Pakistan for six years, unfortunately. And uh, when Taliban withdrew from Afghanistan, we came back to Afghanistan and I joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I started my work in the uh, uh, Department of Country department in which I was uh, in the field department, uh, and that I was uh, in charge of uh, civil law, which deals uh, with uh, um, family law and uh, marriage and this uh, area. But I work in different uh, departments, in different uh, uh, After three years working in uh, department of I posted as a vice council in the Senate and the general of the During my uh, mission in the Senate, I did my master's degree. Uh, and uh, after uh, my mission finished and I got my uh, diploma, I went back to Afghanistan. And I, was, uh, I worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I was the deputy chief of the staff in the research office for three years. Then I posted as a senior council general here in Toronto in great country And we're very lucky to have you here. I did a lot of research about the work that you become so general, and I have to say that 
I'm very impressed with the amount of work that you've done and the amount of work that you continue to do for the community. At the same time, I had the great honor of interviewing you last time for one of our early interviews, which was published on the Native Association of Canada's website. And this interview was one where you provided today's youth and today's women with valuable information pertaining to the significance and the impact of obtaining an education, especially with your background coming from Afghanistan and persevering in terms of working hard, obtaining education, and continuing to make a difference for the community, the people out there, and especially being a huge role model for a lot of women who strive to pursue a career in politics and want to make a difference, but perhaps are hesitant as a result of the profession being dominated by a lot of men. I think that you certainly are a role model for a lot of people, and I encourage people to look at the work that you've done, because you certainly are, are someone who is very influential and continues to be a, a huge role model in our society. I'm very proud, proud and happy that I'm the first ever female president in Afghanistan. I'm proud not only because of myself, but because uh, I uh, think that I can do something for the uh, other Afghan women who want to follow my path, and I uh, can open, I can do something for those uh, women, and I can, I can open the way for those. And uh, I'm proud, I, I, I'm happy because uh, my struggle, my hard work, and my, uh, my uh, education that I uh, study for this, uh, uh, to, to achieve this, um, uh, uh, this level to serve my people, it, uh, is not waste. Uh, I'm very really happy because of this reason. And uh, this is like uh, an encouragement not only for me, for other women and men of Afghanistan. When they see that somebody who is uh, honest, who is hardworking, who is uh, uh, getting education, uh, he or she can reach in a, in a position or achieve whatever she or he wants. This is a kind of encouragement. Certainly, and I think that a lot of people from <coughs> Afghanistan are very proud to have someone like you represent the people of Afghanistan. And I, I certainly believe that uh, the amount of work that you do here in Toronto representing the community of Afghanistan um, certainly results in a lot of people being proud of the work that we do. Consul General, I wanted to ask you a question pertaining to some of the roles, responsibilities, and duties that we have as the current Consul General of Afghanistan here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing uh, I would like to add uh, in my last uh, answer that I, I could uh, uh, broken the uh, term or listening uh, that this uh, some another minded people uh, in uh, my country thought that this position is a man position, not a woman. But I am very happy and proud that I could broken that uh, term of listening. That if we, uh, men and women who have the uh, talent, uh, uh, the experience, commitment and uh, struggle, they can do uh, both or equal, they can, uh, whatever a man do, a woman also can do. And I am very happy. And regarding to uh, your question that uh, my duty and my responsibility in this uh, position, uh, I have 
of uh, love, responsibility, and duty. Uh, the, the, since I'm coming here in March of 2015, uh, at the beginning I started uh, to organize, to start from my office. And uh, as I know that uh, if an organi organization is not successful without discipline or um, good um, management or organization. Organizing. Uh, therefore, I started uh, to, um, uh, at the beginning of the, my job, uh, I uh, observed the, 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 the generally, I, I had an observation about the situation of my office, my uh, colleagues who were working about the capacity. And then I uh, start uh, to um, describe the job. Uh, every person should have their own job, their own responsibility, and their own activation. If uh, uh, responsibility and authorization uh, should be had, when I give some job for my uh, colleague, he or she should have the, uh, uh, she should uh, advise to do the job. Same responsibility. And uh, then I. Um, Um, organize the office, uh, clean the office, because I would like, I wanted to uh, establish a um, clean and uh, um, <coughs> cooperative uh, work environment. So I you know, cleaning the office, organizing all the staffs and it's because not organized, it's not every place. And, uh, make an archive from my office and uh, painting and cleaning everything. And then I um, think about outside how, uh, um, what is my job and duty out of this office. And uh, I um, uh, uh, talk with, uh, um, had meeting with uh, Afghan people who are uh, living here, I mean the communities. And, uh, also with uh, Canadian entities and uh, uh, other uh, government or non-governmental uh, organizations. And uh, inside the office, the responsibility of uh, the duties that we regularly do for uh, Afghan uh, or people who want to go to Afghanistan, uh, issuing passport, uh, Afghan passport and visa and also in power of authority, uh, different kinds of uh, documents, Afghan documents, certified of, uh, ID cards, uh, Afghan of course, uh, driver license, marriage certificate, birth certificate, mm -hmm. so everything. Yeah, everything, everything. And uh, I, um, our office hour start from uh, 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock, everything. And I'm in the office, and uh, if I have some meeting with some other, uh, even the I should work to get out of the office. Otherwise, I'm in the office and uh, controlling and signing some uh, uh, documents of um, letters and uh, talking with the people, solving their problems. And I'm not busy uh, because uh, you know, there is a large You certainly have made a lot of contributions. I have to say that your office is very beautiful here. The, the first time that I, I interviewed you, I, I stepped into your, your office and I was impressed by the organization, by the professionalism of your team here. I can tell just by walking into your office and seeing the people working for you that you have a very strong team and a team that's committed organization to working hard and to serving the people in the community. As well, I think that it's very significant that you delegate and that you give each person a role, a duty, a responsibility so that each individual understands what the responsibilities are. And at the same time, that's, that's the sign of a, a powerful leader and someone who understands the 
the importance of building a team through collaboration, through teamwork, and through working one-on-one -on -one with, with each person in, in the office. And I really like the fact that you took the time to clean and to put everything together here. That's, that's certainly a sign of a leader, of a diplomat that is very hands-on and cares about about the office, but at the same time, the fact that you went outside of the office into the community, you also wanted to hear the voices of people um, from Afghanistan living in Toronto. So that that is certainly a strong thing to do and something to be very proud of because oftentimes in, in government, um, politicians prefer to be in their office and sometimes due to time restrictions, meeting with certain people can be difficult. However, the sign of a, a true diplomat, in my opinion, is someone who is in the office but also takes the time to, to meet with the community that they're serving in order to understand their needs while also contributing as much as possible. So that's, that's certainly um, something to look up to and I think a lot of the diplomats who are watching this program as well, young diplomats, and certainly look up to the things that they should do in their own life um, by not only working in the office, but being involved in the community as well. I, I wanted to ask you about how, what a regular day look like for you? I know you mentioned you're in the office nine to four. Uh, you're very busy with serving the community and helping the people. What would you say out of your time serving here? What would have been your best day in the office? It could have been outside of the office as well or, or a combination of, of the two. Uh, my regular uh, work as I before mentioned, uh, uh, from 9 o'clock to uh, 2 o'clock I'm in the office. But uh, uh, every day uh, in the morning, early in the morning, I wake up and uh, after praying, uh, because I'm a Muslim, I should pray five times. <laughs> in the morning, early I pray, then I um, uh, wash. Um, Afghanistan's news, what happened in Afghanistan. Then uh, having the past and coming to office from 9 to 4. And uh, uh, also, um, uh, during, uh, being in the office, I do my duties and job. And uh, uh, also, uh, I said before that uh, um, uh, not uh, I am on, uh, not always in the office, but I have to go outside and see the people and uh, participate in some occasion. Because uh, one of our duty and job is uh, cultural affairs. We, uh, I also um, uh, do that uh, duty uh, as well. Uh, in uh, cultural affairs, I, um, uh, I uh, have to, uh, I, this is my duty to celebrate uh, our national day, Afghanistan's national day and uh, religious day and cultural uh, day uh, that other uh, Afghan community uh, they celebrate the uh, participate and uh, have a speech um, in their um, events. And also besides cultural affairs, uh, also uh, one of our people which is uh, I, I myself think I should search for uh, a scholarship for an um, education area I should work uh, with uh, the government entities and other uh, organizations to find some a scholarship for uh, Afghan students, especially for girls and women, uh, whether it is short term or long term uh, courses. Uh, I work on this project and also. Uh, uh, in the academy um, area also I work uh, because uh, Afghanistan uh, after three decades of war, four decades of war, 
lost all its simple infrastructure. The only country that more needs is Afghanistan to receive help and assistance. And uh, it can be terms of need. Therefore, I uh, have uh, meeting with uh, uh, some organization and Minister of Mines that Afghanistan is one of the rich countries in uh, natural resources. Uh, but unfortunately, because of war and because of uh, lack of expertise, we couldn't uh, use our um, natural resources. Hopefully, the Minister of Ministry of uh, Mines, uh, Canada Ministry of Mines, that they would have been continued. And also, in the agriculture area, Afghanistan is an agriculture country. Uh, I try to um, uh, help with the Minister of Agriculture. Fortunately, I receive a response from them. And next week, I have a meeting with the uh, Minister of Agriculture. And talk how they can help Afghanistan in this area. And uh, these are the, uh, the responsibilities and the duties that, uh, uh, and that of me, I should uh, um, do it in the first week. In our last interview, you mentioned that there are a lot of benefits associated with having a strong relationship between Canada. And Afghanistan, like you mentioned, Afghanistan is very rich in natural resources. And that is certainly something that Canada should look into in terms of having a closer partnership with Afghanistan. In addition to that, I, I strongly feel that currently Afghanistan is a very powerful country and that a lot of other countries outside of Canada should also look into building that strong relationship. In terms of your job, what would you say are some of the, the most rewarding aspects of being the Consul General of Afghanistan here in Toronto? And at the same time, what would you say are, are some of the, the challenges that you face on an ongoing uh, well, uh, uh, the best uh, reward that uh, I myself think that uh, is uh, whenever I uh, receive a good result, a best result from my work, from my service. Uh, I'm here to serve my uh, people and, uh, uh, who are living here and uh, make a very Close and uh, nice relation with Canadian government uh, staff. And uh, whenever I uh, receive some uh, 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 reaction from the people who uh, receive good service from Council uh, General of Afghanistan in Toronto, this is the best reward, and I, it, it makes me very happy that I am a person who can do something for the best of uh, I think the best you are is that you never can see. And uh, since I'm here, I, uh, I receive many thinking uh, calls in Facebook and magazine. They wrote something about the service that they receive from uh, candidates, not inside them, but outside. Uh, this makes me happy. And I, it makes me encourage you to do more. And that's certainly something that you do is to be a diplomat and to do the position and do the job and the work that you do. You, I clearly can see that you love helping the people and that this almost is, it's certainly your passion, but at the same time when you're passionate about something and you love it so much, sometimes it doesn't even feel like work. You know, because you, you do so much on a regular basis that I, I have to say that that's one of the main messages that I give to the youth and to the people that I meet and speak with when they ask me about advice pertaining to 
what skills, what qualities are important when perhaps pursuing a career in international relations and affairs or a diplomatic career. Even though I'm not a diplomat, I have had the opportunity to meet honorable people such as yourself and various diplomats in, in Canada and the United States. And I can say that one of the main answers they give when, when I ask them that question is that they care about the people, that they want the community to succeed, that they they want to see that strong community and that, that sense of uh, teamwork and that sense of understanding that you are here to help the people and as a result of that, that builds a very strong community and one where, where people continue to rely and trust and they trust you. You mentioned earlier that trust is something that is very valuable and honesty as well. And I think that when the community and the people can trust the politicians and when they can trust uh, diplomats and people that are serving the community, that strong that builds a very that builds a very strong partnership. I, I also noted some Council General um, that you were the first ever female in Afghanistan to be the chief of staff in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And to the viewers, I, I want you all to understand the impact of, of this position. It's you achieved that. You were the first one, first female to ever have this position and to succeed in it. I, I want you to speak to the viewers about the impact of being the first female to be the chief of staff in the foreign affairs department because that's that's ultimately never been done in the history of Afghanistan and you were the first one to open the door to many women and many people who perhaps would have loved to have had an opportunity to have a similar position as you, but would have never been able to had it not been for you. So what would you say as a result of doing that job? What was what what did you learn while while working in that environment, being the first female? That position. Well, uh, uh, at the beginning, it was a little bit uh, difficult for some, uh, some men that uh, they accept a woman who is deputy uh, chief of the staff in the <coughs> minister's office. They thought that, again, this job is not for uh, a woman, and uh, this is a man job. But uh, I I show and I uh, convince them that uh, I can do something. When a man uh, did something before me, I will do better than those. When I uh, you know, got this that position and I did my job honestly and try my best, and, uh, I was very really successful in that, that position, and so uh, they uh, finally that yes, a woman also can. And it was um, it was really a uh, good uh, opportunity and good experience for me and uh, for other women uh, uh, who also want to uh, be that position. And I think that's a very important uh, message that we just made. A lot of times in various professions that are dominated by by men women oftentimes don't have the same opportunities, aren't provided with the chance to, to have a position of power because of being female. And I think that by having someone, having a strong female step in and say, no, I'm a female, but I can do the same job as you. Even though I'm not a male, I can, I'm equal, and I can do the same work, I can do an even better job than you. As long as you give me the chance and the opportunity 
to show you what I'm capable of doing. And I think that in different countries, if you look at various countries such as Canada and the United States of America, I think we're very fortunate to have uh, that equality between men and women, but at the same time in certain professions, such as uh, the legal profession and, and law, is oftentimes dominated by males. Even, even if you look at the United States and Canada, that is one profession that's dominated mostly by, by males. However, as times progress, more females are pursuing law and more females are being provided with these opportunities to work in the field of law, in the field of government. So I think that one of the most important points is to have a lot of strong women who continue to fight and continue to do the work that they're doing in order to not only persevere, but to open the door to many opportunities for these young women who want to pursue perhaps a, a career as a diplomat or a career in international affairs and relations, but perhaps don't have that, that influence or that courage. So is there any message you would like to, to give to the young women who are listening right now and who perhaps want to become a diplomat but are currently in a position where they are surrounded by men and they are told that they cannot do a certain job because of being female. What would you say to the listeners? And it's in certain countries um, that certain countries that, that is applicable to, you know, what would you say to someone listening who perhaps is from Afghanistan right now, or in other countries, happens all across all across the world, who wants to make a difference but can't because of restrictions. Uh, I would like to add uh, one thing that uh, Afghanistan is a um, uh, Islamic country according to our um, uh, Islam uh, and our um, constitution and our religion which is in Afghanistan. Uh, men and women are equal. And I, I can say that the first uh, religious that recognize women's right is Islam. But unfortunately, uh, in societies, uh, traditional societies like Afghanistan uh, or other countries, uh, we are, there are men uh, in power and women are uh, looked as a second class of human being. Uh, in these countries, uh, it is a little bit challenges and challenging and difficult for women to go forward. Always they face with the problem. Always they face with an obstacle. But uh, if someone has confirmed a decision, with a confirmed decision, with a firm decision, uh, we can go forward. And um, we can achieve whatever we want. By a struggle, by a firm decision. Uh, in TP society, uh, it is, uh, uh, we can uh, feel that in some areas, whether, uh, even though they say uh, yes, they have a right to be able to do it, but you before, we can see a little bit they uh, discriminate in some areas, and, uh, but uh, in backward countries like Afghanistan, because of religious society, because of um, uh, more more than uh, uh, three decades for uh, women uh, suffer from that. Uh, and I think that as time progresses and with the work done by influential leaders and the building of relationships between countries and nations, I think the war will end one day. Uh, hopefully, I, I would hope that there would be an end to any suffering um, in terms of women and, and equality. You did mention that there, there is equality in a 
Madison, and you, you brought up a really interesting point, an interesting point when you said that oftentimes in other countries such as Canada and the United States, even though there is equality, you can still, a female can still feel the impact of perhaps not being as equal as a male, and you're, you're absolutely right in, in making that statement because there are many positions and many opportunities for women to work in the government or perhaps even to work in the legal profession. However, and that's not restricted to those two fields. There are many other fields where for the same amount of work done as a male, a female will receive less compensation. And I think that's something that as time progresses, um, it's continuing to improve that equality in terms of compensating women the same amount of money as a man for the same amount of work. I think that's only fair, but I think it is it is a laughable situation in a way because you would assume that if a woman has the same education, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and she applies for a position. And there is a male who has the same amount of education, the same amount of work experience. You would assume that both would receive the same income. It only makes sense. But however, in Canada and the United States of America, that's not the case. And that's something that women have been fighting for for a while. And I think that as time progresses, things will continue to improve. But when examining the perseverance that women have to go through, I think it's very crucial to look at other countries and to see, well, yes, there is a statement that women and men are equal, but you have to live in that country and you have to understand the impact of that. I think that Canada is a great country and I'm very happy and honored to be a Canadian. Um, as mentioned to you during our last interview, I, I spoke a bit about my family. Uh, both of my parents came uh, from Poland uh, and they were immigrants here. My father worked in a factory day and night for over 10 years, and he ended up suffering from two strokes, and this, uh, the second stroke was debilitating. However, he still continued to, to work and to push himself as an immigrant, as someone who wanted to be in this country. And my mom also, as a female immigrant from Poland, worked very hard to be here, and she obtained an education not knowing the language at all, not having any understanding of English, she wanted to obtain an education because she understood the value of, of having an education. And she continued to work hard. She, when she was finished her, her degree, she worked in the profession, and that's one thing that my, my family and my parents always told me to do is to obtain an education, always work hard, love what you do, and most importantly, focus on making a difference because it's so important to, as especially as a young female, to understand the value of obtaining an education. However, females oftentimes will have to overcome challenges, whether it be in education, obtaining an education, you have to look at certain countries and certain areas, and there are some countries where women aren't provided with an opportunity to obtain an education, and there are some countries where it's forbidden for a woman to be educated. So I think that as time progresses, <coughs> it's, it's good that we have a strong community here in Canada where education is very valued, where opportunities are provided, and I'm, I'm very proud that my parents, as immigrants, moved to Canada and worked as hard as they did 
in order to be able to provide me with that education. Um, they, they worked very hard. I was able to complete my bachelor's in legal studies, my master's in public service at the University of Waterloo. Then I attended Harvard Law School's executive education program. As a result of my father working in a factory day and and night, you know that's that's something that I will I will never forget. My father, as I told you last time, passed away eight months ago, and I continue to do this job and I continue to complete this degree in law because. I, I feel like I want to leave a legacy and I want to make a difference in the community. And as a young female, I think that it's very influential to have diplomats and, and female politicians who provide that, that opportunity for everyone to see the work that they're doing and at the same time encourage the youth to become educated and encourage women to fight for what they believe in. And when they fight, to not be afraid to have a voice. And that's ultimately what you have done, and that's ultimately what you continue to do. And I, I have to say that last time when we had a discussion, we looked at the importance of Canada having a strong relationship with Afghanistan. As you mentioned previously, Afghanistan is, is very rich and there are a lot of resources that can be certainly used and at the same time, by not using those resources, it's, there will be other countries who will take that opportunity. And I think that what Canada needs to do is, yeah, Canadians and Canada building that strong relationship with Afghanistan. In terms of relationships, how would you say that the relationship between Canada and Afghanistan compares to that with the United States and Afghanistan? I think both are similar, but would you say that one is more advanced than the other? Would you say that perhaps the United States of America has tapped into um, perhaps the natural resources in Afghanistan in any way, or what would you say are some of the similarities between Canada and the United States when dealing with uh, perhaps building that relationship with Afghanistan? Regarding the last question, I should uh, mention that uh, right now our uh, government is um, about the woman, it is uh, very well that the uh, woman can uh, work uh, and uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to uh, be a diplomat, to be a, a working uh, member of parliament, and uh, go outside of the country. And these are the opportunities that uh, we, uh, we see, and uh, I'm very happy. Uh, and one of uh, uh, the uh, samples that I come in here as a woman, this is the, the, the achievement of uh, um, uh, new government. And, uh, they um, uh, give the right, they uh, recognize women's rights as a woman, as a human being. And uh, uh, this is really um, sometimes make me happy when I see that. I am living in a country uh, where it's great democracy that uh, men and women are equal. And even uh, uh, if, if you don't have the chance, the opportunity to uh, you know, achieve or reach in a position whatever they want. For example, uh, one of uh, Afghan women who uh, 20 years ago, uh, she came with uh, her family to Canada. Uh, her name is Mariam Monset. Yes. Uh, right now, he is the minister, uh, Canada's minister. Uh, 20 years ago, she was an immigrant. But this is a democracy, a great country. I like it. 
And uh, regarding your question, uh, the relations between Afghanistan and Canada and the uh, United States, uh, according to our uh, foreign uh, policy, uh, Afghanistan has, uh, has to have good and friendly and high relations with regional countries and foreign countries, including uh, the United States and Canada. And uh, uh, Afghanistan has never interfered to other countries and never, uh, as a uh, country, never uh, allow other countries to interfere in its dom domestic efforts. And uh, I think uh, this is our, uh, our uh, foreign policy that we have to uh, have good relations with all countries we need because today world is like a, 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 a like a village because of globalization. And all the countries need to have a good relation with each other. If one country is not safe, if a country is not healthy and there is a problem, the rest of the world is not uh, safe. Uh, as we saw um, that um, when the uh, Soviet Union left Afghanistan, Afghanistan uh, uh, became a shelter for tourism for Taliban. And uh, the rest of the world is not safe. Was not safe. We saw the World Trade Center. We saw many uh, other um, uh, incidents in all over the world. And so um, it is it is best for every country to uh, have uh, to uh, make a uh, establish a good relation, especially for Afghanistan, which is, um, needs a lot because of the these wars. We just all the interest. Uh, we need to have not uh, diplomatic relation. We, we should have. Uh, we should demand um, uh, the uh, assistance of these countries to help us in the economy and rebuilding uh, Afghanistan. And I think there are so many different aspects of helping the kids in the community agriculture mm -hmm. and or many things that should be done, and I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what more Canada does along with the United States in building and continuing to build a strong relationship with one another. Council General, Honorable Ms. Wilson from the Army, what is the best advice you'd be able to provide students interested in pursuing a career in international affairs and uh, according to me, the uh, uh, want to pursue career uh, uh, in uh, uh, First of all, um, uh, uh, having uh, interest in this field uh, uh, and uh, studying uh, history, uh, especially war. Political uh, history and other related uh, subject, and uh, practice is the most important. Uh, if, uh, simulation practice and uh, taking part in some uh, workshops and uh, um, as well as uh, simulation and uh, joining to. Uh, this career, uh, and uh, I think experience is, uh, uh, besides studying uh, Chiritika, uh, practical and experience is the most important things to, to be a good diplomat. I, I certainly agree with you. I think that a lot of today's youth not only need to practice in the field, but as you've mentioned before, obtaining an education is key, and then once you obtain that education, practicing in the field that you want to make a difference in is essential, and at the same time, not being afraid to serve the community and being actively involved with the members of the community that you are serving is something that a lot of, I want a lot of the students are listening um, to this to understand the impact of 
not only being behind the books, but also not being afraid to attend conferences, attend events, meet with people, network with people, and also conduct research about the work that government officials, diplomats, and people serving your community conduct that research in order to understand the amount of work that is required to pursue a profession. And if you understand all of the work that's required and you're very passionate and you decide that that is something you want to do, then I always encourage today's youth to look at all of these aspects and once they do, do not be afraid to go out there because they're the only limit that is placed on you is the limit that you place on yourself. And I must say that with your educational background and the, the amount of education that you completed, you, you also had an opportunity to, to teach law as a professor in Afghanistan. And oftentimes I think that a lot of today's youth are influenced by their teachers and by their professors. So another point I wanted to make is to the students listening, please do listen to your professors. Ask questions. Um, that's, that's one of the key things is in order to have an opportunity to ask those questions and to interact with professors, it's best for you to be a student and to obtain that education. And education is something that is ongoing. Uh, you don't necessarily have to just complete a bachelor's and be done. You can complete that master's, that PhD. It's of interest to you. Any final words uh, for the, the listeners today? Uh, We have a lot of achievements in Afghanistan uh, and media and uh, reconstruction and uh, women rights. Uh, in uh, many, many uh, different areas, we have a lot of achievements for the government. But these achievements are not possible without the help of international community, United and uh, Canada, uh, United States, all the countries who help us. Everyone who suffer and help assist our cancer. And uh, I hope this um, uh, helping or assisting uh, continue in the future until we stand or uh, Afghanistan stand on its own feet and be a peaceful and uh, secure uh, region. Well, certainly, Mr. General, we want to thank you very much um, from the bottom of for making such a significant difference in, in our community. We are very lucky to have you here in Canada. Uh, a lot of people speak very highly about the work that you do. And it's an honor to have had the opportunity to, to interview you. And as a young professional, it's been, it's been a pleasure speaking with you about the significance of your relationship with the Afghanistan. The entire world, and I hope that as a result of watching to this of this interview, as a result of watching this interview, I hope that today's youth will become more educated about the importance of Afghanistan, and at the same time, by being a female and by setting a, a high standard for women and giving that accessibility. To, to women in order to pursue government, politics, diplomacy, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions.